In this video, I'm going to uh, derive the Taylor's polynomial uh, for approximating functions. Okay. So we need so to start out with this derivation, we need to uh, we want to start with a general polynomial. Okay. All right. So this is the polynomial polynomial that we're going to have. Okay. So it's going to be uh, let's say a degree n polynomial. Okay. It's going to have this form a zero which is just a constant a1 x minus c plus a2 times x minus c squared plus let's say a3 times x minus c to the third power and so on okay so this is a general form so you can see that it allows for um, some it allows for shifting as well. Okay, so this will be a general form that we're using, general polynomial. So remember the requirements. In the last video, we talked about the requirements uh, to come up with the approximating polynomial of a function. So we're going to apply that uh, to here, okay, to this general polynomial, and we're going to use that uh, to solve for these coefficients that you see here. So we have a zero, okay, a one, a two a3 and then so on so that's gonna so once we find those then we're going to then we'll have our polynomial okay so let's first uh, we need to take successive derivatives of this polynomial okay and then we're going to equate them to uh, the function the derivatives of the uh, function values okay all right so first okay so first derivative of p Okay, we're going to get uh, a0, the derivative of a0 is just 1, oh, I'm sorry, 0, that's just a constant. Uh, the next one will be a, a1, okay, then we have plus 2 times a2 times x minus c plus 3 times a3 times x minus c squared, okay, and then we get uh, n times a n x minus c to the n minus 1. So just basically applying the power rule for each term, okay? All right, second derivative, second order derivative, okay? So again, a1, the derivative a1, is, that's going to give us 0, okay? Then we get 2 a2 plus, okay, bringing down the 2, okay, we're going to get uh, 6 times a3, times x minus c squared plus dot 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 plus so we're going to get n bring down the n minus 1 and then subtract 1 from there okay so uh, we can continue with this right continue taking successive derivatives and eventually because this is a polynomial with degree n okay so eventually we're going to get down to the point okay where we reach to the nth derivative okay we're going to be left with a constant okay so it's going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and then all the way down to it'll be 2 1 and then a sub n okay so if we take one more derivative, then we're going to get uh, we're going to get zero. Okay. So now, so now we need to. The next step is uh, let's assume that we're going to expand around a center point. Okay. So let x be equal to c. So this is what's called our expansion point okay in the previous ver in the previous video uh, we were expanding around zero okay so this is sometimes they call this the uh, center point or the ex or the center of expansion okay and we're going to talk a little bit more about this point um, uh, later when we talk about the uh, radius of convergence okay so it turns out that 
um, these Taylor polynomials, okay, we can express these as a series, and it turns out that these always converge at the, at the center point, okay. All right, so, all right, so next thing was we can, remember, our goal is to find A0, A1, A2, and so on, okay. Okay, so now we're going to equate these uh, to the uh, to the derivatives of the function values of the functions evaluate at this at the expansion point. So remember that the first requirement, okay, is that we want, okay, we want the whatever the function is, okay, we want to make sure that the function value at our expansion point is equal to the polynomial, right, value at the expansion point, okay. All right, so when we plug in C, and for P of X, okay, so if we plug it in, um, we're going to be left with A0, okay, because the rest of the terms will go to 0. So that means this is going to be equal to A0. So that tells us F of C must be A0, okay. So let's now do the same thing for the others. Okay, so p and so p prime at c will give us a one. Okay, p double prime will give us two a two. Okay, and then we can continue like this. So the nth derivative at c, the nth derivative is just constant, okay? So going back up here, notice what this is, okay? So usually here I would pause and let y'all think about it, okay? But it turns out this is, I think most of y'all know or recognize that this is n factorial, okay? All right, so we have n factorial times a to the eight, the eight n term, okay, or a n, I should say. Okay, so now um, we're going to okay, equate these. Okay, so this this must be equal to. Okay, so we want to equate these now to the function to the function values. Okay, to the derivatives of the function values. So this will be equal to f prime of c. Okay, this is, we want this to be equal to f double prime of c. And we want this to be equal to the nth, okay, derivative of f at c. Okay, so we already know a0, okay. a0 is just going to be the function of value at c, okay. Remember, we're given the function, okay. All right, so now, okay, so from here, Okay. Looking at this, okay. Looking at this one. Okay, and then here. Okay, so a1, right, must be equal to f prime of c. Okay, from here, a2 must be equal to f double prime of c. From here, a n is equal to the nth derivative of c divided by n factorial. Okay, and this one. Okay, so this one is actually divided by two. So f double prime c divided by two. So that you can see there's a pattern here. Okay. So this, right? This turns out to be. Uh, this is the general form for these coefficients, okay, that you see up here. So a0, a1, a2, a3, and so on. So if, when n is zero, okay, and by definition zero factorial is one, so you're gonna have f zero of c, okay. So that's just the function evaluated at c, okay. For n equals one, okay, you're gonna get the first derivative evaluated at c divided by one factorial, which is one. And then for n equals to 2, you're going to get the second derivative of f divided by 2 factorial, which is 2. 
and so on. Okay. All right. So now, okay, we can rewrite. We can write out our polynomial. Okay. So we're going to have. Okay. So we have p. Okay, remember, so we had a0. So a0 is, okay, it's just going to be f of c. Okay, the next term, we have a1. So we have f prime of c, okay, times x minus c to the first power plus f double prime of c divided by 2 factorial times x minus c squared okay and then so on so we have the nth derivative of c divided by n factorial times x minus c to the n okay so this right looks like uh, a finite series okay we can actually write this as Okay. Starting with n equals zero to let's say n. Okay, so this can be written as we have the term okay times x minus c to the n. Okay. And so if we let n go to infinity, uh, then this will be an infinite series, okay? All right. So later we'll talk about, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, the uh, radius of convergence, or sometimes I like to call that like the domain of the series, okay? So that is basically the domain of the series is where is this, uh, for which x values is this series converging for, okay? All right, so... Let's see, I think, yeah, so that's, so next video I'm going to do some examples of this, okay.